Comics for Thomas, congrats. You're the winner of the Eden Sky series giveaway. Make sure to check out my other videos uh, for other current giveaways going on. There should be a little picture in the thumbnail of a current book. Enjoy this show. Comically correct comic. Welcome back to Comically Correct Comics. I'm Comic Guy Bry. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you so much. I really appreciate you giving us a shot. And just to give you an idea of what we do on this channel, pretty much all things comic book related with an emphasis on speculation and investment. We also do a lot of giveaways. Um, and there's a little bit of videos sprinkled in there about uh, just general good information to have about the comic book collecting hobby. So I think there really is a little bit of something for everybody here on this channel. I truly believe that this hobby should fund itself. This hobby is totally unique from other hobbies in the sense that you can your, your investments go up over time or some hobbies where you put money in and it's guaranteed to go down like remote control trucks or things along those natures you're putting money out but it's not coming back and that's one of the beautiful things about the comic community and the comic collecting hobby is that money can definitely be coming back there's tons of opportunity in this hobby but you can't go it alone you need to network you need to have friends you need to have a community of fellow collectors that can help you make decisions and i hope to be part of your network and so to that point don't be afraid to reach out. Hit me up over on Instagram if you have any questions about anything at all comic book related that you think I can help answer. I love to connect with you guys. It really does bring me great joy to be able to help somebody with a, just a general question because I've had tons of questions. I've been doing this a long time and there, there's a little bit that I might be able to offer. I definitely don't want to act like I know it know it all or will have all the answers to all your questions, but I'm happy to help where I can. With that said, over on Instagram, if you're not following me over there, um, I think it would be worth your while. I have fresh content over there, uh, unique giveaways that are just on Instagram, unique buying experiences for comic books like my new spin game, which um, as soon as I get the next round of books back from CGC, I'm going to have a whole new spin game, which has been a lot of fun so far. Um, and this Saturday, January 16th, I'm going to have my second ever live sale and it's going to be huge. We're going to have bargain slabs, exclusive covers, incentive covers, raw books, bundle deals, mystery boxes, you name it. We're going to have it. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope to see you there. It's this Saturday at 4 p.m. Saturday, January 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's jump into WandaVision. So as everyone probably knows at this point, WandaVision is coming Friday, January 15th at Disney+. Plus. I'm super excited about it. And we're going to talk about all of the spec books that are associated with the show so far, except for... There's a lot of spec books that are associated with it that are really just more blue chip keys. And what do I mean by blue chip keys is just reliable investments, just books that have always done well and that always will do well. And they make it on the list of spec books for the series, but I don't really consider them spec books. I think they're blue chips. And uh, I'm talking about like the first appearance of Doctor Strange. I mean, that book in high grade is tens of thousands of dollars. And at this point, it's we're no longer really speculating on it. Everybody knows it's a giant book. It's always going to do well. So I'm not going to talk about the giant blue chip keys that are associated with the show. I'm going to talk about the more reasonable ones that are still within reach. And I'm just going to go through all of them. And then at the end, I'm going to give my recommendation for the books that I think still might be worth picking up this late in the game because, you know, a bunch of news has been announced. But as we know... Not everything is known, and uh, some of these books have potential, some of them have gone higher than they should, and that's just the nature of speculation. So the first book on the list is Avengers 52. Now, this is the first appearance of the Grim Reaper, and it's been rumored that the Grim Reaper is going to be the main villain in the Disney Plus WandaVision series, and it very well could be. I, you know, we don't know who the main antagonist, the main villain is going to be in the show yet. Um, but it was leaked that it could possibly be the Grim Reaper. My only problem with the Grim Reaper being the main antagonist is that uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of setup for that in the MCU. Um, 
And the piece of information that was leaked is that the, the main antagonist has a scythe. And you all know what a scythe is. It's that, you know, the pole with the long blade on the end. Like, it very well could be the Grim Reaper. I don't know. Nobody knows at this point. But you know who else has a scythe? Sam Hain. And that brings us to the next book, which is Vision and the Scarlet Witch, number one. This is the first appearance of Sam Hain, who is the physical embodiment, the eternal embodiment of All Hallows' Eve, or Halloween. And the term Samhain is actually a Gaelic festival um, that was it, that's a celebration uh, that comes at the end of the harvest, Halloween time. So that's where the name comes from. And Marvel actually does this a lot with its villain names as they use folklore and things along those lines to come up with uh, names for villains. So some people are speculating that this may be one of the main villains in the TV show. After all, in Vision and Scarlet Witch, number one, on the front cover, there's a picture of Sam Hain with a scythe. It's definitely in the realm of possibility. Next, we have Giant Size Avengers, number four, which is the marriage of Vision and Scarlet Witch. Then we have Amazing Spider-Man Annual, number 16, which is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as the new Captain Marvel. Then we have West Coast Avengers, number four, which is the first appearance of Master Pandemonium, who um, is a gateway for evil spirits to come into the world. Then we have West Coast Avengers number 45, which is the first appearance of the colorless vision. And there's some speculation that the colorless vision may be a story arc in the Wanda WandaVision series. Then we have Avengers Unplugged number five, which is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Photon. Monica Rambeau has had several different monikers in the Marvel continuity, Miss Marvel, Photon, and Spectrum. Then we have Astonishing X-Men number three, which is the first cameo appearance of Abigail Brand, um, an agent of S.W.O.R.D. Then we have Astonishing X-Men number six, which is the first mention of S.W.O.R.D. And S.W.O.R.D. stands for Sentient Worlds Observation and Response Unit, and it's a division of S.H.I.E.L.D. So this is also the first appearance of, the first full appearance of Abigail Brand, and S.W.O.R.D. is definitely confirmed for the WandaVision series. And we have Young Avengers number one, which has a lot of stuff going for it, but the spec for this show is it's the first appearance of the Asgardian, the son of Scarlet Witch, who later, spe later becomes Wiccan. And it has been confirmed that there will be twins in the WandaVision series. Then we have House of M number one, and the, the spec on this one is that Wanda alters the fabric of reality in this in this story arc, and it's rumored that that's going to be a theme in the series as well. Then we have Young Avengers number ten, which is the first appearance of Tommy Shepard, who later become who is the son of Scarlet Witch, who later becomes Speed. Then we have Vision number six, which is the first appearance of Sparky, which is the family's dog. All right, so those are all of the books that are associated with the show so far um, that are still within reach. Again, I didn't put in those major those major keys in there. Um, but now I want to go into which books of those do I think are still worth picking up. So my number one pick out of all of them is Mighty Avengers number one. And the reason it's my number one pick out of all of them is because um, it's the most within reach and it's highly plausible that it could happen. You can still find this book for under $10. Um, and, uh, it's the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Spectrum. And it's, and so it's already known that Monica Rambeau is in the, the MCU. I mean, she's been in the MCU. She appeared in Captain Marvel as a little girl. And now she's been confirmed in the WandaVision series as an adult. And so the, the question is, which, uh, which role is she going to pick up? And I think it's all but certain that it's not going to be Captain Marvel. I think that's pretty well agreed upon. Um, I mean, we could all get a big surprise and it could be Captain Marvel. Um, but I believe that it's going to be one of the other roles, either uh, Spectrum or Photon. Now... For under ten dollars, you are hedging your bets, and and you got that base covered. If it does happen to be Spectrum, now 
the thing about the second book on my list here is um, Avengers Unplugged number five, which is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Photon. Also reasonable, definitely more pricey, more around the twenty to thirty dollar range, near mint raw. Um, but uh, and the interesting thing about Photon is that in the Captain Marvel movie where Monica Rambeau was a child, her mother um, was an a Air Force pilot, and the Air Force pilot had the nickname Photon. <laughs> so it's kind of like either a super obvious big hint or a super obvious big red herring, and it really could go either way. All right, next on the list that I think is still worth picking up is Vision and the Scarlet Witch number one. Now, this is the first solo series of Vision and Scarlet Witch, and it's the first appearance of Samhain. The reason I like this book still, even though the prices have gone up quite a bit since it's back about the show, is that Samhain makes sense to me as a villain. Um, but even if that doesn't pan out, I like this book because of the SEO searchability of the book. Now, what I mean by that is when there's a show or movie of this magnitude, there's going to be a whole plethora of new fans that come on board because of the show that are not comic book collectors. And usually what happens is they see the show, they become a fan, and they go, oh, this started as a comic book? And then they go to eBay and they type in first appearance of Vision and Scarlet Witch, and this book pops up. And so um, when you get new collectors and a whole bunch of them because of the magnitude of this show, and it might bring them into the comic book hobby. And so they're not going to have any concern for FMV or past sales. They're going to look at what's available and they're going to make a purchase if they want it that bad. And I think because of the searchability of this book alone, it's going to do well after the show comes out. Um, that being said, this book is interesting because it has a direct edition, a newsstand edition, and a Canadian price variant. So the direct and newsstand editions are $0.60, cents, and the Canadian price variant is $0.75. Cents. And the newsstand obviously has the barcode. The direct edition has Spider-Man head in the UPC box. And all of the Canadian editions are newsstands. Um, and the Canadian editions are incredibly more rare than the regular and the newsstand editions. So that would be my pick, is if you can find a Canadian price variant um, to go for that one. They have been changing hands a lot these past couple weeks and months because of the show. Um, there's only five 9.8 Canadian newsstand variants on the census. Um, so they're definitely more rare. And the highest sale for, for a CGC 9.8 of the Canadian newsstand variant was $225 with only one bid. Um, I would expect that to go up. Um, and uh, before that, it was, it was still selling for around $125, not much more than the regular or newsstand editions in a 9.8 because there just wasn't much um, hype about the book. There wasn't much demand for it. But you can still find there's several copies of the Canadian newsstand variant raw for under 10 bucks on eBay right now. Um, they're low grade, um, but nonetheless, they are the Canadian newsstand variant. So they are out there. They're not, they're not complete ghosts. Um, another thing to mention on this is that the newsstand and the direct edition, this is right about the time where the distribution models for newsstand and direct editions were about the same. There was about the same number of direct and newsstand editions in the early to mid 80s, which in this book came out in 1982. So um, realistically, you should not pay a premium for a newsstand. And in fact, the direct edition is probably slightly more rare, but the way it plays out is the market dictates and some people are going to pay more for a newsstand for this, but you really shouldn't. You, they're not hard to find. They're not scarce. Um, this is that one time period where newsstands and directs were about the same in numbers. All right. So the last one on my list of books to still pick up, and I was on the fence about this one, is Young Avengers number one. I was on the fence about it because it's seen some really healthy numbers lately. It's sitting comfortably at around $400 for a CGC 9.8. And I really had to stop and think, does this book have anywhere else to grow? And I think that it does. And the reason I think that it does is because this book is the first team, team appearance of the Young Avengers. 
The first appearance of Kate Bishop, who later becomes Hawkeye. The first appearance of Patriot. The first appearance of Iron Lad. The first appearance of Wiccan. Now, Kevin Feige goes on record to say that he is planting seeds for the Young Avengers to show up in the MCU. Um, he actually goes on record to say that. And he doesn't even need to be on record because now we have proof there are seeds of the Young Avengers being planted. We have... Uh, Kate Bishop confirmed in the Hawkeye Disney Plus series. We have uh, Wiccan rumored for the MCU. Well, we know he's going to show up as a baby, um, but we don't know how that's going to play out. So he's rumored to have a presence in the MCU. We have Patriot, who's rumored to be in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. Not to mention Iron Lad and Hulkling. And so... There's just a lot of different ways that this book could see growth. And it seems like there is definitely a trend in next-gen heroes for the Marvel Universe. We're at the point where they're looking at the long-term um, Marvel Universe. Where's this going to go? And they're planting all these seeds for the next-gen. Kate Bishop and now all of these other specs. So I think that this book would be a good long-term spec. I think you might not see anything about it for a few years. Um, and if all else fails, it's still, uh, it, it's still going to hold value because of the first appearance of Kate Bishop. I mean, that's not, I, I don't see this book going down in any way, and I see a lot of potential for this book to go up. And so that's why I did still put it on the list. I don't think it's too late for this book. Um, but you know, if, if you were, if you were really trying to speculate, there might be better books to pick up where you can put $400 into, um, you know, several other ones that might have a faster turnaround time to see any kind of gains. Um, so it really depends on your strategy and, you know, what kind of funds you're working with. That's one of the beautiful things about the specs on this show is there's a lot of stuff available if you have low funds available. I want to know what you guys think of Young Avengers. Is it too late? Leave a note in the comments. Is it too late to get in on Young Avengers? Which one of these books um, is your favorite spec? And um, let's all not forget to just sit back and enjoy this show. I, for one, am so looking forward to new content. And um, I think, if anything, you know, let's not forget just to enjoy the series. So thank you once again for stopping by. Um, don't forget, if, this, if you're new here, uh, my last video, uh, I just started a new giveaway for a slab. So take a look on my thumbnails until you see a little slab on there. And... Um, comment on that video, subscribe to the channel, and you're in it to win. I hope to see you over on Instagram um, on my live sale this Saturday, January 16th, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a great time, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for stopping by. Comically correct comics.